It's easy to understand infidelity when there's agreed upon sexual exclusivity, i.e. monogamy. That is easy to get our heads around. What I want us also to get our heads around is that even when couples have flexible sexual boundaries, there's some amount of disclosed non-monogamy happening, there can still be infidelity, there can still be betrayal, there can still be cheating, because perhaps what you and I have agreed is that I am only um, sexual with people who are of my gender. So then I cheat with somebody, then I have sex with somebody who's not of my gender, that's cheating, right? That's a betrayal of our boundaries. Let's say part of our arrangement is that we have agreed that when, non, when, when we have sex with somebody besides each other, it's a one-time deal on a business trip. And then I find out that you've been involved for five months with somebody on a repeated basis. That's a violation of an agreement that we made. So um, all of which reminds us that it's incredibly important in our relationships, this is part of the preventing infidelity, it's a little preview, talking about where the boundaries are is so helpful, right? We make, a, because, because monogamy has been elevated as the norm, what's right, what's normal, we oftentimes don't speak it, we oftentimes don't define it, we don't co-create it, we don't clarify it. Um, not that it becomes an excuse, use, right? Like that's not a great excuse. Like I didn't know I was supposed to not have sex with somebody else. Um, but it is a reminder that those conversations early and often and understanding why are we putting the boundaries here? Who are we protecting from what, for what reason? And how then are we cultivating a healthy, erotic and intimate climate within those boundaries? Those are all really important conversations to have.